This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double of premium original detail product for half the price. Head over to PattersonCarCare.com or go to the link in the description below. ago that was turbocharged but it was open differential and it went all over the road so that was really scary because that was in the rain and it made me have a certain opinion about the rsx it just made me think it was a scary car that's put all over the place until i started learning about the rsx type s which is better in every way <laughs> the reason being is because you have a k-series motor the k2082 and this one has a limited slip differential in it from the factory. Now, what that does is it keeps each wheel going the same rate rather than yanking you all over the road left to right like the open diff did. But we are dealing with a lot less horsepower. Now, the RSX in the United States, believe it or not, in the early 2000s had the largest aftermarket in the world. You had the most parts available for this car over everything because it was the successor to the Integra in the United States and the Integra was a huge JDM icon. Therefore, when Acura announced the RSX, all the companies hopped on board. So you saw them everywhere with obnoxious body kits, crazy liveries, and underglow. There we go. because I'm used to a K-series and some rickety old chassis like the Miata or say my Integra and it's a really crazy raw experience and it's like oh man this is scary even though it's only an all-motor four-cylinder this is like driving a luxury car with the K-series in it in comparison to a K-swap car. <laughs> most people one of the best k-series motors ever made and that's the motor i decided to put in my integra here in the united states and it was worth it for sure <laughs> into 
liking cars, understanding how everything works without hurting yourself as much in a rear wheel drive car. You also have one of the best engines ever made to come out of Japan with the K20. You have a comfortable interior. You have seats that trick you into thinking they're race car seats because they have the bolstering of it. And they're not. <laughs> they're just comfortable leather seats that are the shape of a racing seat. Now, is it a car to keep forever? I don't know, but it's really solid for the price you can get them now. The shifter, it's a Honda shifter. They are the best shifters in the business. I don't care what people say. You go from an S2000 to an RSX to even a Civic Si, they all feel good. Now, does the K-Series sound good when it's all motor? I don't know. I can't really decide because it's very raspy, it's very high pitched, and it drones when you have an exhaust on it. There's not a lot of feeling coming out of the wheel, to be honest with you, but it's analog enough to where you can kind of overlook it, but you just need to be aware that there's a little bit of space before you start turning in. And when you drive something like a new Civic Type R or something like that, the steering feel is very similar. This car has aged exceptionally well. I drove an Acura TL not too long ago, and just like that, this car, I think, has aged even better than the TL has. And the TL is not even a performance car, right? It's supposed to be a luxury car. The materials in the RSX are just, they feel better to the touch overall. And is it hard plastic in some spots? Yeah, but what car in the early 2000s didn't have that? Back seats, you're not fitting anybody back there. <laughs> if they're an adult, they're not sitting back there, especially with how low the roof line comes down. And if you're above, I don't know, my height, 5'8", yeah, it's gonna be rough back there. Maybe if you just need to run an errand, but on a long road trip, I don't think so. But is this a spiritual successor to the Integra or should it deserve the Integra name? I actually think so because the feeling is still there of the soul of Honda having the high revving engine, the shifter feels great, transmission feels great, but the K-Series transmissions, ironically, are not as strong as say a B-Series LS Trans. Those tend to take power way better and you'll find a lot of people in RSXs when they boost them that the first thing to go is the transmission, which is kind of a shame because the motor can handle power for a while, but it depends on, you know, depends on how much you throw at it. But I've seen some RSXs that were boosted with 400 horsepower run for years. I knew somebody back in Virginia Beach who had one boosted for five years and never had a problem. So as a tuner platform, it's there. The pedal is interesting, and I don't mean the clutch pedal this time. The gas pedal has weight to it. Like, it feels like how the clutch pedal should feel. It's like flipped. The clutch is insanely light, and that's why I tell a lot of people when they're learning how to drive stick, try it in an RSX or a Civic. It's typically the best, or a Miata. Honda really, really knew what they were doing in the late 90s and the early 2000s. They knew their audience. They knew what they could approve on. Unfortunately, the RSX is heavier than all the other cars, so that's why a lot of people overlook this car. But, I mean, look at this, guys. You can still have a ton of fun. 8,500 RPM redline. And it makes some pops. There's one thing about the RSX I think a lot of people have trouble with, and that's the looks of the front of the car. It's not for everybody. I really like the back of the RSX. I think it's a mean looking modern Integra, but it does look more big and bubbly due to the safety regulations issued in the late 90s. So cars started to get bigger. They weren't as compact, even though this is, even though this is considered a compact sports car. It's just where a lot of people start to see Honda go off the rails. They just had it going on. I think this is the golden era of Honda and Acura, but are they trying to come back? Yeah, but their cars nowadays, they just, they're so buttoned up that they just don't feel raw anymore. The Civic Type R, I've said a million times, it's an amazing car. I think it is such a good handling and fun hot hatch to daily, but it just doesn't have the same character or something like this. It just doesn't rev the same way. You don't get eager for that next shift. <laughs> they like, this is a much slower car than the Type R, and yet I'm having more fun in it, to be honest. I could drive this a long time in the mountains and just be entertained all day long. If there's a front
front wheel drive car to buy that you want to be reliable and a hair more modern than an old Civic EG or EK or Integra, this is the one to get. It really is. Windows down. Is it gonna sound like a rice boy? All right, let's see what it sounds like. Three, I'm gonna roll into it so I don't snap anything. Okay, three, two, one, go. Is it a faster car? Yeah, it's much more like a race car. But the Evo 8, the Evo 9, even the Evo 10, this has a nicer interior, steering wheel wise and dash wise, than the Evo 10. And the Evo 10 at one point sold for $45,000, which is ridiculous. All right, on that note, the RSX. What do you think of it? Does it live up to the Integra name? Because I might as well just call this thing an Integra. Do you think it should just have had its own name in Japan as well? Or is it Integra enough to deserve the name? Love to hear what you guys have to say. And on that note, I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.